I'm here uh, interviewing Mickey and uh, Alan. So, Mickey, we're going to uh, start with you first. Uh, of course, the uh, sort of coordinator for Dunlop for the, for the championship. Uh, it's it's a lot more busy uh, in pre-season than many people would would, would think. Uh, this year is particularly um, the plans for the teams to go abroad testing. I don't think we've had that for the last three years because the regulations are new cars. So a lot of teams are going off testing, which is great for my son's Um which is great and I, I think it's going to be a real competitive for you this year I think we're going to have some real sh- diff- in different results I think somebody, some of the drivers are going to surprise us but we'll see in pre-season it's going to be interesting now last season was probably a very stressful year for you because uh, we had no wet races so you had a bunch of wet tyres just sitting in the back doing barely anything and thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, my sales figure for Touring Card took a bit of a hit there. No, I mean, it's, I think the last time, I think people, somebody looked it up on record, the last time there was a season in Touring Card that wasn't, we didn't have one wet race, was 1997, which fell on my, when the year I got married. So, yeah, so it's rained ever since then. <laughs> but no, I mean, I love wet races. I think it's a great leveller. I think the actual the skill of the driver comes out in wet conditions. Um, and I love wet races because I don't have to worry about anything. But no, we'll see. We could go all this year and have 30 wet races, which would be interesting, wouldn't it? Alan, we'll come to you. Uh, we'll come I to hate you now. wet races. I can't stand them. I don't like getting wet in the pit lane. I don't like trudging around with wet jeans on all day long. I'm very happy with last year. Um, I hope that you end up this year without any wet <laughs> wet tyres used at the end of the year as well. Well, you're just worried about getting wet and shrinking a bit more. <laughs> I, I, said, no, no, I know, I've shrunk quite a lot over the years. <laughs> no, sorry, Lewis, I interrupted. Sorry. sorry. No worry. No, uh, last year, uh, of course, ended uh, very spectacularly. Uh, went down to the last race and it was almost in, impossible to call. Uh, it was a great year last year. It's going to be hot, tough to top it this one. It really was that final race of the year. It's, it, Mickey, Mickey will endorse me on this. It's brilliant. Um, I saw it for the first time in 2013 before the final round, round 30 in 2013 when Andrew Jordan won the championship. He had to carve his way through the field. And in that run-up to the final race, to the final start of the year, um, everyone backstage everybody in the teams, everybody in the paddock, leading up to that final race, irrelevant of what team they were in, were all talking about what was going to happen. They weren't talking about their own drivers, they were talking about what was going to happen in the championship battle. And the way you think about this, these are hugely experienced people, people that have been around motorsport for so many years, but even they get pulled into this spectacular run up to a script that you can't really a Hollywood script writer wouldn't come up with the script and we had the same last year with Gordon Shedd what's going to happen it was just proper drama and I mean I, I, I would be very happy if it was resolved way before the final race of the year because then I could fill in my sheet for the final podium of the year I'd be able to write down what questions I was going to ask and I'd know but we never know until the final chequered flag falls and that's one of the delights of the BTCC you don't get that in many places in the world the, the, the drama of that crescendo of the season just brilliant and you're right 2016 it, you just know it will be exactly the same story whether the drivers are the same who knows don't know but you, you know it's going to be resolved at the end of you, the year you can't I mean I always get nervous before any race Thruxton especially he really every, does you I get nervous because I can't while. I have to because I don't I map take my head how it's going to work that last race was for me because as everybody races safely the aggressive is great the way he was coming from the frail and he, Gordon was driving the skin off the thing he was over every curb hitting everything and I was thinking please don't lose the championship for a tyre going because you can imagine the inner feeling and you know and then three laps around he's, he, and he's got to where he needs to be back out back it down but he's, he's all over the back of Jack Goff he's cutting a corner and I'm just looking and then I remember somebody in the Honda because I looked after Honda last year somebody in the team says I hope these tyres are going to hang on to this Mickey 
and you can imagine I could feel myself I bet yeah but the relief when he went across that line was just are, oh. are, are you telling the team to tell him over the radio can you use a little bit less curb or are, are you are you giving advice during the race it's, it's quite funny because you know from my history I've looked after Jason for many years and this issue I made the decision to go and look after Honda and they've all said um, Eddie Inkley Gordon's engineer and Barry and Steve he said if you do anything get Gordon to listen to you he's great he, he gets in the car and typical Scottish people the red mist comes down and they go <laughs> so over the, over the months I've been saying to him look I'll set your pressure, start coming on target. Let it build up. You're going to go out with real low pressure, build it up again. Think about the race. It's not going to be one in the first half, all the way through. That, that race, I went to him on the grid and at the end, and all I said to him was, you know what you've got to do. I can't say anything. The car is perfect. The tyres are perfect. The pressures are perfect. It's all down to you. And it's one of those drives, you know what I mean? You just... you. He builds up within, and and then towards the end, you're just going. Oh, if he loses this because the tiger lets go, I would be. You know, you would be. When you damaged. when you got the relief at the end of the race, did you? Um, did you? Some of us did. Some of us always do. It's different from me because it's a hen. It's a you know, it's a season. Thirty races I've done. I'm always going to win, and I'm always going to be lose. I'm always going to come first. I'm always going to come last. But when you're working with a team it's that personal yeah, okay, I, I contribute a little bit when Jason's won his two championships yeah. I've done that as well yeah. it, it, it's like a pressure off your shoulders yeah. you know what it's I mean awesome. it's and you know did I have a moment at the back of going to think, saying a few yeah. bleep 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 <laughs> a bit, but yeah I did did I was I glad when I was going up the motor I think that was incredible what for me the key for that race though was I remember going home and you know you can't get your messages at the event it's too busy everybody I got onto the motorway and I was you start thinking about the day and what has just happened and then my phone started going off messages texts emails and it was different I had people that worked in different industries and a, a different manufacturers and they was going well done Mickey that was unbelievable and it was from the time I left Brands to the time I got home until I walked through the door and my wife was there she records this I can't believe that and I, I kid you not, I must have had over 100 messages, email, just saying that was just the most... And just couldn't really take it in. And for days and days after, it's just, it was just one of those things. Did you, did, did you get... Um, it was interesting, though. So I was chatting to Gordon Shen yesterday, and he, he, he described something that I've previously heard of in the music industry, which is um, he got post-championship blues. And rock bands and pop bands that come off tour after they've finished the tour and they've been, I don't know, on the road for a year, once they finish and you think that they'll be relieved that it's all done, they don't they get really down because they've had a different lifestyle. Do you get that after the end of the season? It's different with me because I work the touring car so I go to do other championships so I finished the touring car and I think the following weekend I went straight to the States got back from the States, went to China, went to Bahrain. You don't get a chance. I don't get a chance, but it's quite ironic because I went to, I think it was China. Yeah, it was China. Or Texas. Anyway, one of them, I went to the race, got there, great, one thing, and it rained. And you think, I'm going across the road, shorts on, tan, and it rained. So it rained in China, it rained in Texas, it rained in Bahrain, in the desert. Did you take your spare wets with you? Luckily, they didn't fit on the cars, but I think my last race is the end of November, and then, you know, you try to get a bit of time off, and then I had a couple of days off. I think it was on the, I don't know, last week of December. I had a phone call, can you come to Donington on the 17th of December? We're all out testing. Oh, wow. And they're all there testing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. right, we're ready, we're starting again. So yeah. I'd like to get a break, but you never kind of switch off. No, no, no. Unlike you. Carries on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, Team BMR uh, loves to surprise us uh, before sort of pre-season. Last year it was with the announcements of Jason Plato and Colin Turgenton as a driver lineup, and now this year they've got the the Subaru instead of uh, the CC. What, what's your opinion opinion on that? It's blooming amazing. They've brought the name Subaru into the championship. They've clearly done an amazing job of uh, of, of getting a manufacturer to to come and join, and 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 well done to them. But it's not just about getting one manufacturer in in 2016 it's about the full 
build-up, putting the infrastructure in place in order to attract a manufacturer to their team. They won the team's title last year, they won the independent team's title last year by putting the right people in the right place and going about the job in the right way. And they took on teams that have uh, won championships many times. Matt Neal yesterday here at Autosport, um, uh, when I was talking to him, I, I mentioned the, the coming in of a new manufacturer, of course, Matt Neal and Gordon Sheridan drive with Honda, a proper manufacturer, full manufacturer supported team. Um, and, and he said, yeah, well, um, another manufacturer comes in, Subaru, uh, and of course we didn't win the team's title last year. So that's, that's a very important thing to a, to a team. And for BMR to have won that title last year would have, would have hurt some of the vastly experienced BTCC teams. So it, it's fantastic that Subaru have come in, and it is such credit to the team that they've put the right people in place to attract a manufacturer and to have won a team's title and an independent team's title. I reckon that, that would have hurt a few teams last year. And, and then also, of course, now they've got the Subaru in there and now a manufacturer, which means that independence drivers have now got a little bit... They've got something to fight for this year because BMR were pretty much up the road in terms of the independence title. That, that's going to that's gonna be great news for the likes of... Um, just pick one example off the top of my head uh, motor based performance that are of course still a, uh, an independent team team BMR won that independent title last year now it, it, it's, it's much more up for grabs for other teams and um, if you look at the way motor based performance they've signed Andrew Jordan they've yet to announce whether they're going to be running Matt Jackson I think most people are hoping that that deal is put in place that, that they will um, to be honest, I'd really like to see Andrew Jordan and Matt Jackson in the same team. That would be oh. that would be one to savour, wouldn't it? And that would, I mean, yeah, the pair of them. I think they'd complement each other very well. Yeah. They've both got the speed. I think they'd really work well together. And they, I think they're going to really make some surprises this year, yeah. especially early on in the season, because I think with all the changes, one thing or another, Subaru are going to be late getting ready. Honda have got a new engine, new car. So I think they can really hit the front from the beginning because they've got an established car now and they've already started testing. But going back to the independence thing, I think it'd be great for people like Rob Austin, Adam Morgan, you know, we've got all these people, Eurotech, they've got a real shot at going for, you yeah. know, which is great and I think that's where it should be aimed. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be one hell of a race. This season's going to be... Now, there have been three sort of main driver changes uh, in terms of teams. You've got Rob Austin uh, has gone to Handy Motorsport, changes his rear-wheel drive to front-wheel drive, also on the other side of the car uh, for, for this year. Uh, Andy Jordan, of course, as we've already mentioned, uh, to Motorbase, and then Jack Coff has announced on Thursday to WSR. So what, what is your opinion on all of those moves? Mickey, we'll start with you. I'm really pleased with Jack Coff. I think... He drove, and at times was quicker than Andrew last year. He drove with a real mature head. Um, I think he's been given a great opportunity, and I'm really pleased for him. Rob, going to front-wheel drive, I am, to say I'm extremely nervous <laughs> is an understatement because he's got to learn it all again. I think he, I spoke to him briefly yesterday. And he said the last time he drove a front-wheel drive car was 10 years ago. So he's got a lot of work cut out. So that'd be it. Um, and Colin going back to rear wheel drive. He's home. You know, he won two titles with rear wheel drive. So for him, it's not a big change. But Jack Goff, Rob's got the biggest job on hand. I think Jack Goff's going to an established team. I think he will shine rear wheel drive. It, I think for him, it'll be, it'll be walking apart. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, I mean, the interesting thing is here we are in January at the Autosport Show. We've had a lot of stories this week. You've just highlighted them all, Lewis. You've got Jack Goff, Rob Austin, Andrew Jordan, um, uh, and obviously the big story about Subaru. All of that sort of happened. But we've got a lot of slots yet to fill on the oh, grid. I mean, uh, uh, there's a, a lot of pieces of the jigsaw that have yet to, to come into place. And I'm, I'm not convinced that we... Um, have had all of the, the, the big stories that are going to set tongue, tongues wagging. So um, I think there's still a big story out there. There is, yeah. I think there is. Yeah, yeah. It's especially about a woman reporter. Uh, oh, 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 yes, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, 
Do you believe with Jack Goff because he's been? Louise Goodman will still be doing ITV4 this year. Yes, she will, Lewis. She will be good. Yeah. Does that make you happy? Yes, that that is that is nice to know. Makes us happy as well. Do you do look really happy, Bertha? I have to say, you look smart. I think we've all got a crush on Louise Goodman. So. Do you believe that Jack Goff, because he's now taken over Andy Prio's role, do you think that's pressure for him taking over the drive of a na- of, of such a big name like Andy Prio? I think if you get into a British touring car car on the grid, there's pressure from front to back. You've got to perform. You can't make mistakes. You have four to 50,000 people watching. You have how many millions, billions watching on TV. So there is a pressure all the way along there. But Jack... In, He's, he's done well I think he's got the mature head yeah, on him and I think I think he'll be fine I will think he'll be fine and finally I mean I'm sorry to take up your time um, but we, we, we do this for fun no, it's fine. we love this that's fine he's my wingman yeah it's fine uh, finally <laughs> I know you've probably got a dinner date tonight somewhere no? I don't know Goodman's gone home oh she's gone yeah, home yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. um the, there's been a new uh, development series announced by uh, the BTCC, uh, which is the BTEC uh, series. This is where it's kind, it's basically like club racing with all the old, old touring cars. What, what's your opinion on that? We'll, we'll start with you, Alan. Not, not actually announced by the BTCC, but um, a, a place for the older spec BTCC cars to, to go. It's um, a, a BARC-run championship that, that's um, uh, 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 certainly a home for the for the older spec. Um, uh, GPRM spec cars um, but also a place where drivers can can learn the cars learn a little bit more about setting up a, a, a modern day touring car um, and, but to do it away from the limelight um, and, and uh, to, to, to do it at, um, it it's impossible to say they're going to be low key meetings because I, I know um, the, the first meeting on their calendar is the truck racing meeting um, at Brands Hatch, which attracts the hugest crowd. It's just it's an amazing crowd. It might not be a touring car crowd, but it's 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 getting on that way, and it's an amazing meeting. And, and this year, that meeting at Brands Hatch is going to be a three-day meeting. So um, so when when um, when teams and drivers sign up for for. Uh, the BTEC development series, um, and they think they're going to be turning up to a to a few people that are um, a diehard fans. Uh, they'll have a slightly different story when they get to the first meeting of the year. But it is a great idea. I mean, the the, the, the cars need to go somewhere. Um, they need to have a home, and, and uh, there's a lot of life left in those cars. Of course, uh, you've got to remember as well. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that can't step up to touring car. They haven't got the budgets. You know, they want to learn about something. They want to learn about the race crash. And I think it's all you've got to look at. It's also for race engineers to develop and learn about these cars. So the idea is good. Um, and it, you've got to also, it's, it's revenue for the teams to work other weekends. It's because they have to make a living. I agree with Alan. The first one, to do your first one on a truck race meeting is a bit of a... So there'll be a little bit of pressure there. Well, let's see how it goes. I think the idea is very good. there, Mickey? Not particularly. No, no. Please I would come. Love, no, no. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I commentate on that meeting, oh, and, and, I, I, and I, I, I thoroughly uh, enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was Louise. No, oh, no, uh, no. We, we can invite her. We can get no, her along. Invite, no, I think she might be busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's, it's great. It's. I think it's a Never great trust idea. Him, Lewis. No. Never trust him. Never trust me. No, I think it's a good idea. Let's see how it builds. Um, as I say, Alan said, there's a lot of cars out there all that can't really do anything. So. Let's say, let's say it goes. I think it's a good idea. Does championship have any effect on the amount of tyres that you, you've got? Do you, do you have to supply the tyres for that as well? I may be sell it, selling the tyres to them people, yes. Each, and quite rightly so. I've got enough wets for him anyway. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much for your time, Mickey and Alan. Uh, enjoy the rest of the Autosport show. Uh, and I hope to see you both at Media Day. Nice one, Lewis. Keep up the good work. Yeah, well done. I enjoy the rest of your day. And if you have any dinner dates and tips and... Control Easy man. Yeah. Easy man. We'll look after you.